So when I choose an item to be, mod to be controlled by a change order, there's a lot of automation happening in the background where it gathers the information for you and automatically brings it into the change order. The routing tab is going to provide you a list of all participants involved with the current change order. And that is customizable. So I can have some predefined routings. Or, like I said before, if somebody gets hired, you can certainly add them during the process so that they can be involved in approving, reviewing, or doing whatever their, their task is going to be. And the last one is a graphical representation of the status. This way I can see exactly what's going on and where the current change order is at and I understand what's going on. I can also click on some of those cells and see what individuals have done what actions. So if I'm a manager, I can see maybe somebody in production hasn't approved or hasn't logged in, and then I can take a course of action based on that issue. So that gives you an idea of the general form that's related with the change order. The custom properties I talked about earlier, that's all the information that needs to be captured about that change order. You can see over here I have a little bit of a sample of a paper-based change order, and those are the check boxes over here, the yes, no answers. All that information, again, would be organized in the properties area, and all you have to do is click on a list or enter in some information to fill out your change order. So with the demonstration, I've got a couple different things to show you. We're going we're gonna to give you a basic overview of a closed engineering change order so you can take a look at some of the discussions that might go on some of the drawing markups that can be organized in the change order, just to give you a good comfort level with the change order before we start actually creating some new ones. Once we've done that, we're going to do an initial release of an electrical project. So we've got some schematic drawings, an electrical project that has all these components that are related to it. Well, we want to release that out to manufacturing so we can do that very easily with the change order, and it's automatically going to release all the data related to that particular project. Once we've done a, that ERO, we'll do an ECO, an engineering change order. And we're going to do a very simple change to an existing item. We're going to add some documents, modify the bill of material. Uh, and then when we're finished, we'll go ahead and release that to manufacturing as well. When we're all finished, I'll give you a chance to see some of the report generators that are available for change orders. So if you want to generate a report to see what types of change orders are active, which ones are closed, what the states are for the change orders, you have the ability to do that. I don't have email notification turned on. I didn't want Outlook popping up a bunch of notifications. So at the end, I'll show you what those email notifications are going to look like. Uh, we will see how you're notified inside the software, but you also get external notifications. So if you're off-site or you're gone for the day, you, know, you can see that a current active change order has been initiated, and it'll give you an idea of what your role or responsibility is. So with that, I'm going to move into the demonstration here. So just Give me a second here while I minimize a few things. Now we talked about vault manufacturing having secure access. So I'm going to launch vault manufacturing, and the first thing that I'm posed is going to be my login. We'll give that a second here to start up. Now we do have the ability to integrate with your Windows login as well. I'm not going to check that, but that would take my credentials that I use to get into my, my Windows system and automatically apply it to this login. It just saves you some time from having to enter in the logins twice. So once you log into the server, you're going to see a couple different things here. Now, down here in the lower left-hand corner, this is my work list. You can see that I currently have an active change order that I need to do some action against. We're, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but what I wanted to do is show you an existing change order. So I've got a shortcut down here. I just click on that shortcut, and it shows me an existing change order. And you'll notice up here at the top, it's showing me that it's currently closed. So this one was currently work in progress, individuals working on it, approving it, reviewing it, markups are being generated, etc. cetera. Um, and now that it's finished, it's in a closed state. The system does not delete those. They're always around for historical reference so that you can see what was going on with a particular change order at any time. Um, in the general tab, like we talked about before, this is all the information relevant to the change order. You can see here that I got ECO number. I've got the description here for the title. And I also have the types of actions that are going to take place for the change order. So I can convey to a designer, here's what you need to do, and these are the steps that you need to take. Um, there's a due date. 
there's you know dates submitted, all that information is being captured, and it also even captures my name, who I'm logged into or logged in as currently. Down here at the bottom, this is all that information uh, that we we capture based on this particular change order. In this case, we've got this was an engineering change. It was you know no cost since it was an initial release of a particular part or an assembly, and we can see other types of information down here below. The items area, these are all the files that are related to this change order. They're going to be controlled by the change order, and this can automatically move the lifecycle state for me. You can see here that this data is currently released. So it could be in production right now and being manufactured, whatever, and it's currently in a release state. You also notice that I'm dealing with the current revisions. So I've got Rev A, Rev B, whatever revision is currently active for a particular part or assembly, I'm always going to see that latest and greatest information. The comments area is going to show me any type of collaboration that's going on with the change order. And I'm just going to change it to more of a linear process here. You can see that this was a drawing markup that was done maybe by some individual within your company. It could have been somebody on the shop floor, uh, whatever. We'll take a look at that. And this markup, there was an error that was found. We'll give it a second here, and I'll make it a little larger for you. Should get it full screen. Okay. So this is going to show you some markups that were going on with a particular drawing. So we wanted to modify this plate assembly. You can see here that a note was put on here to create a new shorter clamp assembly that needs to be 289 millimeters. But there were also some other changes that needed to go on as well. There were some bill of material changes. Um, this was going from a tall jig harness to a small jig harness. And you can see the individual that marked this up even put the new part numbers that need to be assigned to these documents. So again, all the drawing markups and the changes that need to be applied to the document are placed onto this electronic markup, and it's stored within the change order for historical reference. If I wanted to print this out, I always have the ability, no matter where I'm at, to create that printout. Of course, we want to save paper nowadays, so we've got the electronic version, and we don't need to print that out. As I go through some of the discussions here, you can just get an idea that it's been submitted to be worked on, submitted to be reviewed, but somewhere along the line it was rejected. And in this case, the engineer was reviewing the drawing and noticed that a balloon was missing on a particular item. So we rejected that inside of the, uh, the change order. And then down here below, you can see that there was some collaboration going on between the engineer and the designer. So the designer was finished with the changes, and he submitted that. And you can see basically down here his comments. Uh, the engineer made a mistake where item one was on the drawing, but items eight and nine were missing. So he's made the changes, and now he's submitted to be reviewed one more time. And if I click on this now, you can see the engineer apologized for his mistake, and now they've gone ahead and they've moved on to the next state. When it's all finished, you can also approve or place stamps on the drawings. So if I take a look at that one, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, not that you saw this before, but there were some new balloons that were placed on the drawing. Item one was the one that the engineer actually missed. But now I've approved that document, and I've placed a stamp on it. So you have the ability to put conditional stamps on your drawing markups to convey some sort of issue that might be going on. Is it approved, declined, rejected, whatever. There's a pre-built uh, series of stamps that are available to place on your drawings. Once it was finished, you can see down here it was approved and then it was ultimately released to manufacturing. So the comments area allows you to create collaborate, collaborative efforts on a particular design and capture that information for historical reference. Now the file section is going to show me all the files related to the change order. So we looked at that original drawing markup. That's going to be organized in here. It's also going to show me any parts, assemblies, or, or 3D data that's related to this as well. Now, in this case, since this is closed, this was the original drawing. But when I look at the new drawing, you can see now that it's a smaller plate. And also, all the information in the title block has been updated as well. I got the new part number. I have the new title. The bill of materials has been updated. All the changes that needed to be committed to that change order have been applied. And through a managerial aspect, I'm able to come in and review that without ever having to open up Inventor. I log into the system. 
I don't have to open up any 3D CAD models that might get complex for my skill set, but I can look at the particular drawing and make some sort of decision based on that.